It's a big reputation to live up to, being called the original Brutal Challenge, a moniker which has come to describe the entire Souls franchise, its spiritual successors, and the so-called Souls-likes that have sprung out of the genre that Souls made famous. Although no one single game can claim to be the first action RPG, many will point to From Software's 2009 dark fantasy Demon Souls as the prototype for the modern ARPG, a genre that is more popular than ever before with gamers of all backgrounds. That model of unforgiving difficulty, custom-built mechanics, and ridiculous story characteristics is the essential formula for Souls games and a damn fine formula in that. But none of those individual elements are original to From Software's titles, nor have they been monopolized by that company and their games, meaning that Souls is not one of a kind, but perhaps simply the first of its kind, matching together those ingredients in a way that only Miyazaki and his team can do. There are many great action games and RPGs that existed before and after 2009, and I've always felt it too reductive, if not blatantly disrespectful, to classify every game that happens to be challenging in an exacting way as a Souls-like. The Souls games are unmistakably highly influential to a particular genre, and even in a broader sense, but they are not without their peers across the spectrum of difficult video games with technical prowess, or games with a high dose of outlandish creativity. Those gamers that hold souls on the pedestal of such categories might need to, if you will forgive such a condescending phrase that has often been directed at me, play more games. And with that being said, I got around to playing a game that I hadn't played before, the 2020 remake of Demon's Souls. As the first true PlayStation 5 game, and to date I must lament, one of the only two or three true PS5 games, as well as the first of many worthwhile games that can trace part of their lineage back to the From Software nexus of ideas, I was eager to experience Demon's Souls as not only part of video game history that I neglected in 2009, when I was aware of its existence, but because I have rather enjoyed games like Bloodborne and more recently my choice and most others choice for game of 2022, Elden Ring. In a technical sense and from a design approach, Demon's Souls remake feels very familiar and it does well to stand on its own as a good game for today's standards. Good games of the past are almost always good games of the present. But for the same reasons that I would give praise to the overall design of Demon Souls, it also starts to show its age rather quickly when you realize so many other games have been there and done that in a more refined and enjoyable manner than the original Demon Souls did and does. While further innovation by other games takes nothing away from the Demon Souls itself, I can't quite put it in the category of the great games, considering that they do Demon Souls much better than Demon Souls does itself. The first thing to point out would be the scale of the whole operation. Demon Souls does something interesting that a lot of games often don't do by granting the player access right from the start to explore five self-contained levels across the Archstones at their own leisure, almost right away. Defeating certain bosses and collecting certain items will trigger smaller events in other parts of the game, but there's no big trigger that knocks down all the dominoes. You have to beat every boss in the game one by one in order to set up the ending, but you can beat them in almost whichever order you like. Elden Ring kind of expanded on this idea, but in a much larger, much more exciting and interesting world with far more distinction in between the lands. Sure, it may not seem like such a fair comparison to pit a 2009 game against a 2022 game on a technical level, except that you should be reminded that Demon's Souls Remake is actually a game that came out in 2020 as a platform exclusive which we all had high hopes for. One thing that I begin to notice is how dark, and I'm not talking metaphorically, I mean literally how dark Demon's Souls remake is. I had to turn up my brightness a fair bit to actually be able to see anything in parts of the game, and there's never a good excuse for poor lighting in a scene. 
Being a remake entirely rebuilt, you would expect there to be less grayscale animation as well. Explain to me then levels like Boletaria, which only ever experiences shades of the color wheel. When you encounter the blue and red dragons, the only highlights in an otherwise black and white level. Or the downright bad level design of the swamp, whatever it's called, which comprises almost the entirety of the fifth archstone. I suppose I shouldn't complain so much about the balance of dark color in the game due to the overpowering garish tints of the flame lurker boss room and the stone fang tunnels. Probably the only difficult part of that boss fight. Maybe the best example of level design is the Prison of Hope in the Tower of Latria, one of the more eerie and intriguing parts of Demon's Souls that is only ever occasionally lit by the glowing lanterns of the crazy octopi people. It's a nice touch for the level, as are the prisoners that block your path and occasionally get you killed as thanks for saving them. It's like this game is going out of its way just to annoy the player. In fairness, the remake does have decent graphics and a nice art style, but I suppose the Souls games have never been the best games in terms of aesthetics. Apart from Bloodborne, which revels in the kind of dark color contrast that I didn't appreciate in parts of Demon's Souls. But of course it's not just the way it looks, but the way it plays, with annoying platforming sections in a game with no jump button. There's a reason these types of games are now implementing a jump button, and no good reason why they didn't have a jump button before. They make the game arbitrarily difficult in certain sections, and more frustrating than anything. One welcome addition is the sodden ring which allows you to navigate the swamp in normal speed, making a painful slog less of a mess. That's one bad level, and a game with only five of them. So to me, that means one-fifth of the game could have been a lot better. Although, that maiden boss fight at the end of the swamp almost makes up for it. The real annoyance, more than anything in Demon's Souls, is the lack of a viable checkpoint before a boss room. Meaning you have to run all the way through fire-breathing dragons, big swamp pools of poison, winding cliff sides with rolling skeletons and sniping stingrays to get back to a boss that you probably beat right away on a second try if the journey to get there wasn't so frustrating. You'd think Bluepoint might have made adjustments to this, especially when Elden Ring and others have done so. The main attractions, which are over-the-top, over-the-scale boss fights, are simplified compared to many of the evolved designs that we would see later in these types of games. Most of the bosses only spam one or two main attacks, with poor AI, which can easily be exploited through proper timing, parrying, and magic spell spam. And none of them ever evolves into multiple phases as the fights progress. This is probably the easiest of all such games in terms of boss difficulty. I definitely ended up with most of my deaths from running through the levels impatiently or suiciding to get Black World Tendency than I ever did in the boss fights themselves. Some of the fights are at least cool, like the Maiden, the Tower Knight, and the Old King Galant. They feel like the bosses that I've come to know, expect, and appreciate. Then there are some dumb gimmicky bosses like the Dragon God, the Phalanx, the Stingray, the final boss, which isn't even a boss. One cool aspect is that Demon's Souls has a feature of the multiplayer which lets the player roleplay as a boss, letting you either control the old monk in the form of a black phantom, pitting you against a real player trying to beat the boss, or vice versa. I enjoyed this as well as the few PvP interactions that I got into, which is always one of the welcome mechanics of these games. The overall boss and enemy design isn't nearly as varied as it could have been, but I do like some of the designs and I'll give praise to enemies like the fat officials, those guys that throw daggers from the shadows, and even the skeletons for being uniquely absurd and posing an actual threat, which is an interest to fight them. The RPG mechanics themselves are relatively solid, but this is perhaps objectively the most outdated of all the features. I've never particularly thought the From Software concept of an RPG was as far as the envelope could be pushed. And I was right about that. Because games like Neo 2 really give you the depth to personalize a build as much as is conceivably possible, while games in the From Software universe hold you back 
by simply, almost lazily, having you slap on a few pieces of armor and a ring or two to modify a few stats without giving you an entirely different impression on how the game can be played. There's no weapon stat customization or armor stat customization other than a few plus valuations on a few select weapons. Offering diminishing returns and even an Elden Ring, these features are still lacking. There aren't really any guilds or clans you can join that affect your gameplay, and there certainly isn't an emote that lets you punch an enemy to death in one significant strike, unless I miss that. Maybe I needed to spend more time myself in learning the deeper mechanics of Demon Souls, but what I saw was competent enough, and in many areas still rather enjoyable, enough for me to understand why people still have regard for a game that is in some ways a source point for excellent achievements we have today, and in others, a game that is very much in the shadow of those offshoots. Demon's Souls is a good game, an 8 out of 10. Instituting many of the trademark qualities of great action RPGs thereafter, which are some of the best qualities of all video games. I think while Demon's Souls in games like it can be rather challenging, that isn't the trait that defines it. What defines a game like Demon's Souls is the unbending imagination of fantasy role-playing that can only exist in video games. For that, I think Demon's Souls does have a soul. How many souls might you have devoured?